Tumago ang ganyan dito sa Pilipinas. Uh, appropriate yan. Kasi one time, kung magkalita sa mga malaking congregation, maraming uh, services yan na pinakailan din ang mga pasokas mo. So mostly, sa harap, may nagkahawak ng five minutes. Five minutes. Two minutes. So malalaman mo na. One time I was uh, speaking the ballet at Santam Bridge. Mukha na pakahama na yung sermon ko. Hanap ko ng hanap ng timing, walang nag-relay ng, ano, ng uh, paper. Five minutes ko din. Siguro, nasa, siguro maganda yung mensahe ko, hindi eh, ko natin siya continue. Pagkatapos noon, nag-continue siya ako, sabi ko, palagay ko mahaba na yun. So I said, Amen. Pagkatapos ng pananandahan, sabi ko, wala mo kayo five minutes. Sabi yung pastor na yun, saan? Ayun, ano siya sabi? Uh, ano yun? Ayun, stop life. Stop life pa lang, ano siya eh. Paka green, sige. Patuloy. Paka yellow, 3 minutes. Sabi niya, kanina pa rin yun sa'yo eh. <laughs> Hindi mo naman sabi si Nami sa akin na paka red pala, tama na. Eh, sana ah, maliwala ang ipusapan. No? Kala ko na puro green. Kaya eh, nagpamanit mo na ito. Anyway. If you have your Bible, you can turn to Psalm 23. This is the third message on the names of God compounded with Jehovah. I chose this Psalm 23 because it has a special link with the occasion today, sa installation ng mga bagong miyembro na at composition ng World of Elders or World of Trustees ng ARM. The Lord is our shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yes, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me on the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The revelation of the name, the Lord is my shepherd, found in Psalm 23. You notice that is a big contrast with the Lord's prayer. In the Lord's Prayer, it is always plural pronoun. We, ours, they, us. But in some way, the third, third, it is basically a personal pronoun that you can find. There is no reference to we, they, or us, but an I, my. Therefore, it is a very personal sum for leaders and for members of the body of Jesus Christ. Psalm 23 is for the people of God, for Christians. Now it follows Psalm 22, which speaks about the suffering servant. And you will find that in Matthew 27, 46, Why have you forsaken me? Then comes the exaltation and confidence in Psalm 23, which further calls the pearl of the sun. Third thing, the revelation of God as the shepherd of his people in the Old Testament, the revelation of God as the shepherd in the New Testament and the revelation of blessings guaranteed by God, our shepherd. We take the first one, the revelation of God in the Old Testament. The Lord is my shepherd, is an immortal hope. Perhaps the most intimate and comforting psalm in the writings of King David. It was probably written during the time when King David was the shepherd king. The primary meaning of the word shepherd is to feed the sheep and to lead the sheep to safe pasture. The shepherd cares and protects his truck from the thieves and feeds even at the cost of his life. Now the direct link to those who are to be told as leaders is very clear. Your purpose is twofold at least in this psalm. Number one, to provide the feeding of the word of God to your people that they will not be ignorant of the will of the Lord for their life. 
Because the Bible speaks about if you love God, then there are two marks of one who loves God. The first of that is you love the brothers, and number two, you keep his commandments. The fact of the matter is, logically enough, you cannot keep the commandments of God unless you know the commandments of God. Therefore, the first task of the elders and the leaders would be feed the people with the word of God. And the second part of that is to provide for them guidance and leadership. If you provide guidance and leadership, be sure that you have the model in yourself to give guidance to your people. So you are a showcase, you are exhibit A of the leaders of Jesus Christ. You fail in that and you fail in your task as the good shepherd that God has commanded you to be. Always look at yourself, am I a good example to my people? As a matter of fact, whatever you do in your life, you have to ask yourself the question, am I glorifying to the Lord in what I do? When you answer all these in the affirmative, then you become a good shepherd indeed. That is a responsibility that you have to take a look at. But there is a third purpose actually, and that is to protect the flock. There are beasts around you, walls in the language of Jesus Christ, that are part of the congregation. The congregation will always experience conflict that might be the Puma. There are contracts in membership. On one hand, you will find the wheat, on the other hand, you will find the tares. You will find the wolves, and you will find the goats. So there are always people within the church that are contracting in their belief. The task of the leader is to discern who are the wolves in the flock or among the flock and to protect them. And there are new doctrines that are coming in that are cultic. Your job is to protect them. Therefore, if you want to protect your people from all these heresies that are trying to invade the church, then you must be sound biblically and you must be sound theologically as well. There is no end to your theological education. In the I think of John Calvin, he said, the moment you cease to be a scholar, you cease to preach. When you stand before the audience or your people, be sure that there is something that you have to give to them. That it is not a rehash shooting of old messages, but some messages that address the realities and the problems of the time itself. In the Old Testament, Joseph was introduced as one who was feeding the flock of his brethren. Later, Joseph's brothers, in answering Pharaoh's question about who they were, they said, Your servants are shepherds and also are fathers. They were not ashamed to be identified a shepherd because of the connotation as to who a shepherd would be. David, when he returned from Saul's palace, feed his father's sheep. He was a shepherd when Samuel anointed him as king of Israel. Therefore, when you talk about the shepherd and use it in the Old Testament, it applies to prince and people. David and his people is the reference for that. God of King Cyrus as my shepherd whom he used to repatriate the remnant you back to their homeland. In other words, how pleasant it is for every leader to, to hear the word of God, my shepherd. And when God calls you my shepherd, he is pleased with you, but you can be very sure he has a purpose for your life as well. Whom God calls, he always blessed and magnified. If you take a look at the shepherd, it also applies to priests, prophets, as pastors, and people. God said, I will give you my shepherd after my own heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Now, that text by itself, Jeremiah 3 15, is something that all leaders have to remember always. Because it is God who gives you to the art. It is God who gives you to your churches. You did not appoint yourself. It was God in his sovereignty, in his will, have chosen by grace to assign you the particular plan. So you don't complain by saying, "Ask the money to put up a common money to sit back." That is not a choice you can make, because it is God who said, "I will give you as a shepherd to my flock." But the question, therefore, is: It is also God who will give you a heart filled with knowledge and understanding. How blessed are those whom God calls as leaders? Also, at the same time, the concept of shepherd relates to foolishness and judgment. God will judge the irresponsible shepherds who did not feed the flock but scattered them. In other words, my responsibility as you not understand. 
sapagkat God will hold them accountable for the nurture of God's people. You have to be very careful about the responsibility that God has given to you. The Old Testament portrayed the shepherd in that it is one chosen by God to lead, to feed, and to protect the flock that God has given to you. He cares for them, and in a sense, he gave his life for them. So in the greater context, the flock is given and chosen by God for his chosen people at the same time. And the issue is, are we prepared to be the shepherd that God wanted us to be? The second is that the revelation of the shepherd on the ship in the New Testament. Again, you move now from chapter 23 to John chapter 10, 11, and 14. In the Old Testament, the composite picture of a shepherd finds fulfillment in Jesus Christ. He said, I am the good shepherd. Now, the word I am the good shepherd was referred to Genesis and Exodus 3, verse 14, when God revealed himself to Moses, I am who I am. And then he said, I am sent you. It is in the sense, therefore, that in the New Testament, the Lord Jesus Christ is, I am, and he was claiming the reality that he was the I am who is I am. And so he is the very God himself that is referred to in the revelation of God to Moses. Ezekiel, for example, echoes Psalm 23, the speaker of God, two shepherds. I will seek them, I will deliver them, I will feed them in good pasture. I will make them lie down. I will seek what that which is lost, bind the brokenhearted, and send them what is sick. But I will destroy the fat and strong and feed them in judgment. And here is a terrible task of the shepherd, the pastor shepherd. Because your job is going to be uncomfortable as well. You are not only going to be popular, you are not only going to receive the upgrade of your people, but you are also to provide discipline and judgment. The judgment of God for you. And many times we try to avoid that. Why? Because in churches, money is equal number. And we do not want to decrease the number. Because you decrease the number, you decrease the resources. So we try to accommodate with that compromise. We do not want to lose leaders. And in the process, we cease to be the kind of shepherd God wants us to be. Because God said, You are the guardian of my flock, and you are to administer discipline whenever that discipline is needed. Bear in mind that numbers equals resources apply to human thinking, but as far as you are concerned, learn from the Levites. I did not give land to the Levites, but I told them, I am your resource. So shepherds and pastors, in the final analysis, the goals of men should not be exchanged for the glory of God. In that same shepherd, you are accountable. He alone is your resource. And when God alone is your resource, God is more than enough for what you need. But don't forget that. The other part about that is that Jesus also said, I am the bishop of our, of your soul. In 1 Peter 2.25. He is the great shepherd because he was the first, he was firstly the Lamb of God who takes the sins of the world. In other words, he earned his credential well. He did not become a shepherd simply because he is the Son of God. He is not. But at the same time, he became a shepherd because primarily, he gave his life for his sheep. So the question therefore is, leaders, are you prepared to give your life for your people as well? When you stand before the congregation on the Sunday, when your eyes roam around the congregation, are you looking at the empty spaces and praying, why are they not here? And at the end of the service, are you burdened to reach out to them and say, do you have a need that I did not see? How can I help you? I want you to grow, I want you to worship with us in the church every Sunday. We have to take a look at that responsibility. Or otherwise, why are we shepherd? Why are we leader? To care for your people is a very important aspect of that. Without doubt that there are times when you may have to release someone from the congregation. But in general, as shepherd, you must care that everyone is well fed in the church itself. Jesus Christ took the form of an angel, but he also he did not take the form of an angel, but the seal of Abraham emptied himself and took the form of a servant. Always we have the question, why did Jesus Christ become man when he was already God? In fact, the question is, Michael, Jesus 
Jesus was only one and not God. Or we ask ourselves another question. Are we saved if Jesus came only as God but not man? Why must he be God now? And sound doctrine is dependent upon how to understand the relationship between God, man, Jesus, Christ. And the reason for that is very simple. He became man because he needed to die for your sins and my sin. The biblical language implies that the wages of sin is death. From the Old Testament, animal sacrifices were given, but they were inadequate. In other words, if we want to punish sin, then someone must die for our sin. Jesus Christ must be human in order not only to experience all the experiences, the pain and the sufferings and the sorrow of every human being, but he died because he took your sins and my sins upon himself. He had to die for that sin. But he was man, he was bad because he was not simply in the category of an animal. Animals cannot once and for all remove sin. But as God, his value is immeasurable. In other words, because he is immeasurable, his value of sacrifice applies to all of us and more. And in that sense, therefore, if Jesus Christ is Savior and Lord, then the value of the life and the being of Jesus Christ is much more than we need to be saved today. And that is why we can say that Jesus Christ died once and for all. But shepherd, you will not die like Jesus Christ in order to save your people. But you are prepared to lay down your lives so that those people will be pointed to Jesus Christ and they will remain in faith in Jesus Christ. Are you prepared to give your life for Jesus? In some situations, the question is, what about my family? What about my children? I spend so much time in my congregation. Why becomes jealous with the congregation? And other women in the church because Mabuti pa yung mga babae na pinanikigyan mo ako, hindi na sila nagkikita sa bahay. Yung mga bata na lang, that naman, my heart sa para sa ibang tao, kaya sa amin, pinamabayaan mo. Tension like that will come to you, shepherd. But the point simply is this. When God calls you as a shepherd, there are sacrifices you have to accept. And the wives and the families have to accept and to rally behind the one called by God because he has no choice about the call. In the same way that you have no choice, you are part of the family of the one chosen. So you have to open your heart and mind to God and say, Lord God, I accept that your calling is not only for my husband or for my wife, but your calling is for our family as a whole. And you have to bring your family along with you in this call, or otherwise you will be ineffective in the ministry itself. The whole family, in that sense, will have to support the one chosen by God to serve as the shepherd of God's people. We find other dimensions of Jesus as shepherd in the benediction of Paul, and that is very clear enough. The God of peace brought back Jesus from the dead, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will. Now, what are the things that we understand about the Lord Jesus Christ being the good shepherd in the New Testament is simply this. During the time of the Lord Jesus Christ, the metaphors have changed. In other words, when King David used, the Lord is my shepherd, the economy was agricultural in nature. But when Jesus Christ came, the economy has changed already. As a matter of fact, David was a shepherd, but Jesus was a carpenter. And so the paradigm has shifted in that sense. And yet at the same time, he used the paradigm and the wording of the Old Testament when he referred him to himself as uh, the good shepherd. Today, the disciples are no longer farmers. Today, the disciples are no longer fishermen simply. They are tax collectors, they are religious leaders, they are government officials, and even medical doctors and lawyers and accountants. Today, all professions are part of the people of God already. And yet, at the same time, the role and responsibility of the shepherd have not changed. The greatest paradigm simply is this. In the Old Testament, they spoke about the kingdom of God in the New Testament. I mean the kingdom of Israel. But in the New Testament, the sheep have moved to the kingdom of God. So in the past, it was a state, a geographical state, a, a physical state of Israel. But in the New, it is now the kingdom of God, the rule of God in every person, in every church, in every society. You notice also, that when you talk about the king, you talk about the reign of the king, but Jesus Christ is different. He is king, if you know that about that time. Right? The name of your church is Jesus Reign. That is valid, that's true. 
But you must not forget that the king who reigns is also a suffering king. Today with the advent of prosperity theology, we think that when you become a Christian, you will be rich and you will be affluent and you will be wealthy. That if you are not wealthy, something is wrong with you. That is not true. Leaders, bear in mind that your king is a suffering servant as well. That there are times we have to suffer, there are times we have to undergo sickness, there are times we have to undergo deprivation and hunger and all that. But the point still remains that if you have to be the shepherd, allow God to be sovereign in your will. There are times when you have to suffer. And I don't know of any pastor who not suffer. Alright? Sabi ang isang, well, to suffer is my job. You paid me for that. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. But, suffer you not. And the thing about suffering with the pastor is that you have nobody to turn to. You cannot fight behind the pulpit. Your only recourse is to go up. Parang sinasabi ng kaibigan natin, isumbong kita sa Lord. Sumbong ka sa Lord. Eh, ano magagawa ba? Doon ka naman talaga papunta, no? So the other thing about that is that we did. As shepherds, be very sure that your daily prayer that Lord enlarge my heart today to accommodate all the pains of my people that I might bring them before your throne of grace in mercy. Bless them. Bless them. Bless them. That is going to be a true shepherd. Bring your people always to the throne of God. Jesus Christ was both shepherd and the lamb, the high priest and the one who was sacrificed for our sin. So you find that double role. You are shepherd, but you are at the same time the lamb. You are the sacrificial lamb of so many people. And sometimes they are painful, sometimes they are unfair. But you have to be prepared to accept your role. There's no way you can get out of that. But the one thing that we don't know is that God will never leave you nor forsake you. He will always be with you. He will always be with you. Now, that's not about that is the shepherd. The shepherd is a warrior king. Now, there are times when the shepherd will have to be like a lion. You will not always be like a lion. There are situations where you have to exercise the shifting of your personality. For the shepherd king is also a warrior king. And the Paschal lamb of sacrifice became also the lion king. So you have to balance that yourself. When you administer justice and when you administer the word of God, do it without fear and, and uh, any compromise. Say what God wants us to say. Now let me take a look at the closing part of that, the revelation of the blessing. In the book of Psalm uh, 23, you can create a homiletical outline for that by simply using four basic headings. Psalm 23, God is the pastor, verses 1b to 3a, God is the guide, verses 3b to 4, and God the healer, verse 5, and God the host, verse 6. Now you can develop a sermon out of this passage itself. The Lord is my shepherd. Now, the shepherd of my Lord is with reference to Isaiah 40. And in Isaiah 40, the shepherd is referred to as the Jehovah Elohim. In other words, the concept of both God is my shepherd carries two compounds by itself. The first of that is Jehovah. Jehovah, the eternal self-existing God of revelation, and especially the God who said, I am who I am. Whatever you need, I am the answer to your need. Therefore, fear not and exercise your responsibility as my shepherd. The God Jehovah is beyond description. There is not enough words in the human language that can describe who he is. He is the eternal present, the same yesterday, today, and forever. The name simply means whatever you need, I am. Now, well, whatever you face in your problem, always look back. God said, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. If God performed the miracle of the past, he can perform the same miracle today. Whatever has been done in the past, they shall be guaranteed. He will do it now and tomorrow as well. God will never be short change in terms of what you need in the ministry. What we experience are not new. They are simply changing your context and so on. But the God guarantees you whatever you have seen in the past, whatever you knew about what I have done in the past, the miracles and the signs and wonders and so on and so forth, I can do that for you today. And I can do that for you tomorrow. I think you look around, it's 
It is not a work of merit. Okay. As I said, at the guy time, and some of you may not be there, my wife Anna and I are honored and privileged to be identified with you. For the simple reason that I feel deep in my heart for the years I've been associated with you, that God is doing some, something significant in the midst of me. It hurts my heart sometimes when I can sense that some of you do not sense that sense of moment that the Spirit is working in the midst of you. When you try to divide, when you try to create all these kinds of annoying detours in the process of growth, that hurts. Someone said, what is revival? Revival is when you enter a place. You know that there is the sense of the presence of the Holy One in there. All of a sudden, whatever your thoughts might be, you empty them. You are in front of the Holy God and all of a sudden your heart is prepared to worship. Revival is the presence of the glory of God at that place, at that time, at any time in your life. But you see, we can never say revival is here. But what we can say is always this. Raise your life to God, and when the wind of revival blows, when the spirit blows in you, which you are prepared to touch it, do not hold your as we are saved and wait for the wind to blow. No. Every day you come to church, be prepared that the wind of the spirit will blow, that revival will take place, and that is why in that sense we are have been blessed by the Lord through the years. Have that sense of moment in your life to discern that God is blessing you. To discern that God's spirit is moving in the midst of you. And if you fail to do that, I suggest to you, you will never complete the joy that God, of God's blessings in your midst today. <laughs> now the name Elohim is plural, signifying Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. With him, nothing is impossible. But what is important in Elohim is that he is also the covenant God who made a covenant relationship with you. In other words, what can say, I have a covenant with you. The word covenant is simply a return. I have a contract with you. I have a contract with each one of you. And the contract is simply simple. What? If you believe I am God, then worship me as God, and I will bless you. That's the contract of God. And I have many contracts with you, my brothers and sisters. I am your God, you will be my people. If you obey me, I will bless you. If you disobey me, I will curse you. Wow! Can you imagine God as a covenant with you are? Can you say that? We are a covenant people with God. Amen. And the answer about that is, I shall not want. But they say, you will not lack anything, we are, if you will trust God. You will not lack anything as a Christian if you trust God. Whatever are your needs right now in your family, your individual self, and some of you I shall not want. There is nothing in your life that God cannot meet. There is no emptiness in your heart that God cannot feel. There is nothing in your mind that God cannot assuage and bring assurance. I shall not want. But more than that, the presence of the glory of God is the greatest thing that God can give to you. Because salvation and life is not all about you and me. Salvation is all about God. We are chosen not for ourselves, but we are chosen for others. And leaders, you are chosen for your flock. You are chosen for people who are not yet believers. You are chosen for the others, not just for yourself. So do not look at your leadership simply on the basis of who you are and what you will be. But rather look at your leadership in terms of the others whom God has given to you. He said, he makes me to lie down in green pasture. Wow, the meaning of the word, the bread of life. There is a need for us in that sense to be contemplative about the word of God. This verse is about contemplation. Pastors, have you taken time, have you taken leave to just contemplate on the word of God and to know him more and more? To, to study theology, to, to study about his actions in history today. I suggest you need to contemplate. Find regular time to contemplate, to be alone by yourself and to study. And then he said this, he leads me beside the still waters. The still waters of holiness in that sense. Jesus Christ spoke about the rivers of living water that will flow out of you. Be filled with the spirit and the spirit will be flowing through you. And then he said he restores my soul. There are times when you are there are times when you are going to be given up, there are times when you are about to quit. You will say, I don't deserve it, my wife doesn't deserve it, my husband doesn't deserve it, my children doesn't deserve it, I quit. But God said, I will.
will restore your soul. Wait upon me. Wait upon me. Don't give up. Because I will not give up. I will always be with you. Wait upon the Lord. Those who wait upon the Lord, He shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like the eagle. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. God is our confident God, isn't it? You know, in Africa, there was a safari, and there was a guy, and for some reason, they lost their path in the mountains of Africa. And the safari was frantic. Whatever he do now, we might get lost here. And the guy came to say, no more. In this part of the world, I am your man. In other words, Jesus is our man. We will never get lost. Whatever you want to go, we will arrive. Because Jesus is Amen. our man. Amen. He said, I will walk in the valley of the shadow of death, but I shall fear no evil, for you are with me if your brother stop comfort me. Now, the fact about that is that you can misunderstand this text, but you are not in the valley because of sin. The text says that Jesus, God was with you, therefore it was not because of sin. But why are you in the valley? Because God wants you to grow. Because God allows trials and tests in your life so that you can be mature and be complete. But the fact is that when you pass through the valley, what God is saying is, it's alright, I have you come. It's alright, I have you come. What are you doing? Now, so walk through the valley. Don't be afraid about it. God will provide for you in ways that you will never imagine possible. Now you notice there is a ship in the program from third person he to you. Why did what? Why did the change take place from he to you? And the reason is when everything else is good for you, when everything else is right for you, then you talk about God. But when you have a problem, you talk to God. That makes the difference, isn't it? Hey, have you noticed that when you are pastors and we are okay? You talk about God, you know, God, God, God. But when you have a problem, it's different. You don't talk about God, you talk to God because you need Him and you need His presence. And as leaders, there will be times when you will be talking to God more and more than just talking about God. But when you start talking to God, not just about God, then you begin to realize how privileged are you that the God of the universe who sits on the throne in the language of Isaiah, you are seated on the throne on high. How privileged are you that you have access to Him, that you can talk to Him, that you are sure that He is listening to you and He will answer your prayer. What a privilege that you have today in Jesus Christ our shepherd. You prepare a people in the presence of my enemies, he anoints my head with oil. Uh, again, <laughs> oil here is an anointing without any doubt. But some scholars would suggest that oil was medicinal also in nature. And therefore, the reference is to the other compound of the name Jehovah, Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. Now, what I'm trying to tell you is that my brothers and sisters, God will heal. It's not only physical healing that you're talking about. There are problems, divisions, and uh, alienations, uh, isolations among us. But God is saying, if you trust me, I'll bring healing one day. And those who left will be back. Are we prepared to welcome them home? As leaders, open the door wide. Be firm about the righteousness of God, but open the door wide. When you come to worship God in spirit and in truth, there is always a place for you here. Because salvation is not only forgiveness of our unrighteousness, but the right restoration of righteousness so that you and I are can be in the service. That is our desire. That there will be a whole coming and a gathering for our people who are not with us right now. We are not going to be satisfied until God is honored in all these things. Leaders, therefore, you are elected as settlers. And your authority does not just come from the authority of the people, but your authority as leaders come from the authority of God Himself. Bear that in mind. The church is not just a social organism, the church is not just a social arrangement of people with a structure, but the church primarily is a divine reality. Unless you can see the church as a divine reality where God is present, you miss out on what God is talking about the church. When you enter this church, you immediately say, this is the present, the present condition. This body is where God is. This is all 
Mike, I'm not my answer. This is a divine reality, or otherwise we'll make that mistake. That's the advantage is that if you take a look at that relationship, God is saying, I am your friend. The Lord is my shepherd, my, my. And then you feel like, wow, oh, really? Can I be that more? I'm yours. Nipa, mabigat yung magdap na yung ka. Kaya hindi ka na mong dipilitin siya. Kaya, nabibigyan yung ilan at patigil yung kredibilitin siya. Uy, kamusta ka? Kamusta ka, Art? Kaya ko, matatak na lupa, hindi ba? But, what happens when God is it? God is it? You are my friend. Art, you are my friend. Sonny, you are my friend. How do you feel? You have access to me anytime. You don't need a second time. You don't need to make an appointment. Yeah. Come before yeah. my presence anytime. Yeah. But that is the privilege of all Christian leaders and Christian yeah. leaders into other yeah. members of the body of Jesus Christ. You don't need an appointment to be with God. Amen. You have access to Him because He is your shepherd and He will bless you. And this one thing I do know, my brothers and sisters, when you serve the shepherd of the sheep, Will you become the shepherd? Regardless of the situation in the land, regardless of when our political leaders, or our businessmen are giving up, there is one thing that we have that they don't have, and that is hope. Because we already know what lies ahead into the future, therefore the future defines how we live, and we know what the future holds. The Bible tells us in the final chapters of the book, he said this, and the kingdom of the world will become the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. That is where we are going. That is not the hope. That is our destiny. We are heaven bound. The world will become the kingdom of the Lord. And out of that, when the end will come, the power of Jesus reigns will be among those that will be visible before the throne of God. Different from different times. But I assure you, you will be there. 